To understand uh, finding surface area of combination of solids, let's begin with a pencil. And let's see where we go. Now if I ask you, can you find the total surface area of this pencil? How will you start thinking about it? The way I'll think is, hey, is there a formula directly that gives me area of a pencil, surface area of a pencil? And it turns out that there isn't a pretty looking formula. So then I'll think, okay, can I imagine this pencil to be made of some shapes for which I know the formula? In some previous year, they taught me some formula. Can I imagine this pencil to be made up of those shapes? And I want you to stop and notice if you can catch them. In this case, I've colored them, so it's pretty clear. The first figure you may see is a cylinder over here. You may then see a cone over here. And then you may see half a ball. A ball is a sphere. Half a ball over here, which is called a hemisphere. So if you remember the formulae for these, or formulas, or I always forget which of the two that is. If you remember that, then you can just find the area here, find the area of this, and find the area of this, and add them, and you'll have the answer. So I want you to pause right now and try doing that. Also check if you remember those formulae. If you don't, we'll, we'll recap them over here. The first thing that pops out to me is this cylinder. So it's a three-dimensional object, right? It's a cylinder, two circles. If I cut it over here, I'll get a circle over here, another circle over here, and I'll get this cylinder. I'm going to try and draw that. And what is the formula for this part of the area? For this part, like without the circles. So if you remember the formula with the circles, that's called total surface area. I actually never remember that because that's usually not very useful, especially in combinations. I only remember this bit's area, which is called usually the curved surface area. Do you remember what that is? That's right, it's 2 pi r h. 2 pi r h. And a good question now is, what are these R and H in this figure? And the answer to that is, R is the radius of this circle. This circle's radius is what we call R. I'm going to mark it over here. So that's this R. And H is this height of the cylinder. It's called height because usually we keep the cylinder upright. Now I've made it lie down over here. So this is my H. So if you know these two, you can find the surface area of this. If you ever need to find the surface area totally, just remember this. And then add pi r squared for this and pi r squared for this. At least that's what I do. And notice that this curve surface area is just the circumference, 2 pi r multiplied by h. Now let's go to the cone. Do you remember the formula for cone? Like as you recollect that, let me try and draw the cone over here. So I have my cone. Again, there's a circle that I've cut out over here. And now, what is the formula for cone? So again, I only care about the curved surface formula. Only about this. And I always only care about that. I do not care about this bit. Because imagine, if you were to paint this pencil, right? That's kind of what we mean by total surface area. If you were to paint this, how much area would you have to paint? And notice that you won't have to paint this red bit because that's what's been cut. That would have been inside. So with this, what is the formula for the curved surface area of a cone? So it's pi r l. Pi R L. By the way, you don't have to mark these two formulae up. You can. There is a way to understand why they work. And I'll cover that in a different video. But as of now, it's pi R L. And what is R and L? R again is the radius of this circle. And L is not the height though. L is the, what's called a slant height. This length. What's given directly for us over here. We are finally left with this guy. This half a ball or half a sphere, which is also called a hemisphere will look something like this. Let's draw it. And there it is. And I have something that looks like half a ball. That should do. And you need to find this area. Notice that it's a 3D figure, right? I mean, I'm, I can't draw 3D on this. So, what is this area going to be? Do you remember? Now, if this is R, if this radius of this circle that we've cut here, if that's R, and once again, if you care only about this curved surface, because you can just add pi r squared to it, then this curved surface area is actually a very, a very interesting number. It's 2 pi r squared. Now, why is that interesting? It's because this circle would have been pi r squared, but this area is 2 pi r squared. And notice that if you remember these three, actually you can solve all the problems that are asked at least in class 10. 
Uh, these are the only three formulae, apart from, of course, length into breadth for rectangle and pi r squared for circle. That's all you need to know. So now is a good time to actually use the numbers in these results and see what the final answer is. I'm going to do it now. Let's see if you get the same answer. So pi r l, that's 22 by 7. That's usually what I take pi is, unless they say something else. Multiplied by r, r is 2 centimeters. That's a mistake that I've made many, many, many times. It's actually r is half of 2 centimeters because this 2 would be the diameter of the circle. It's the width of the pencil or the diameter of the circle. So r would be half of that. r would be 1 centimeter. 1 centimeter. So 1 centimeter multiplied by L, which is directly given to us as 2 centimeters. That's going to be equal to 44. Let's write over here, 44. 22 times 2 by 7 centimeters square. Centimeter into centimeter. The reason I keep the units here is because I used to always like not see, see something will be given in millimeters sneakily and then I'll, I'll not notice that and then I'll make a mistake. So I try my best to keep the units so that I minimize the chances of going wrong. I still go wrong. The number of times I make calculation errors in this is, is very high. So what about 2 pi rh? 2 times 22 by 7 multiplied by r, which is 1 centimeter. Notice that the r is going to be the same. The circle and the circle are the same for over here and here. 1 multiplied by h. h is this length, right? That's 10 centimeters. Let's draw a line again over here just to keep things separate. Now let's find this. This is going to be 2 times 22, 44 times 10, 440. So 440 by 7 centimeters square. Shouldn't surprise us. Clearly this surface area should be much bigger than this. It turns out it's 10 times more, 10 times bigger. Now you have this hemisphere over here. That's 2 pi r squared. So you're going to take 2 times 22 over 7 multiplied by r squared. r is 1. So 1 centimeter square. And this is also going to be 44 by 7. That's a coincidence. In general, uh, this and this need not have been equal at all. So uh, now we have it. Now let's look at this. Uh, what is the total area of this going to be? Just the sum of these three. 44 plus 440 plus 44. In other words, 440 plus 88. I'm going to do that in my head. 440 plus 88, that's going to be 440 plus 100 minus 12. So 540, 530, 528. So 528 over 7 centimeter square. And you can leave it here or calculate what this will be. Uh, I'm going to just do that. So 7 goes 7 times and 49 and I'll have 3 remaining. And that's 38. It goes 7 goes 5 times and 38. And then I'll have uh, 3 more remaining. And in 3, in 30, it'll go 4 times and I'll have a remainder of 2. It'll just go under 3 times. I'm going to leave that there. It's a rounded off answer. And one of the problems I had at least when I used to solve such questions is whenever I looked at an answer like this, I would be like, I'm def I've definitely made a mistake. Because uh, I, I'm used to getting pretty looking answers. But don't worry, in this chapter, you do get a lot of answers that look something like this. And finally, the purpose of this video is not to uh, find the surface area of a pencil, even though that's what we did. It is to use this question as an excuse to learn how to solve any problem in this chapter. Because all the problems follow the same pattern. Look at a combination like this. Break it down into its pieces. In this case, a cone, a cylinder and a hemisphere. It may be something else in another question, but what you'll be doing is exactly the same thing. Then, remember the formula that you need to solve the problem. I actually chose the pencil here because it gives us neatly the only three formulae we need to remember which is pi rl for the curved surface area over here, 2 pi rh for the cylinder surface area, and 2 pi r squared for hemisphere. You can solve any problem just using these three, as long as you also know, a rectangle, which is a length and a breadth, and pi r squared for circle. Once you've done this, it boils down to checking the numbers correctly and putting them in without making any mistake, and you will have your answer.